Hi all, welcome to Code of Action. This is an Angular Signal beginners discussion on how to create and work with Angular Signals. If you are hearing Angular Signals for the first time, just think of them as variables to store values in Angular apps. A detailed formal definition would be discussed later. If you want to know the benefits of Angular Signal over normal component variables, you could check out the articles and videos given in description. So let's get started from scratch. So let's start with creating an Angular 16 project inside this folder directory. For that, first of all, I have to open the command prompt from this same folder directory. Now let's create the new Angular project. I will name it as Learn Angular Signal. Now we don't need routing. I will stick with CSS. Finally, we are done with the Angular creation command and here you can see the new folder with the new Angular project name Learn Angular Signal. Now to open the project inside VS Code, first of all, let's navigate inside the folder. Now let's open this inside VS Code. So here we have created a brand new Angular 16 project. Now let's run this application. So here we go ng serve hyphen o. So this will compile the project and open the same in your default web browser. So this is how the fresh Angular 16 project looks like. Now first of all, I will discuss the basics of Angular signals like how you can create signals and how you can work with them in your code. And then only I will discuss how it is different from already existing component variables. So back to the project, here we have the default component, app component. And here is the corresponding HTML and which is responsible for the default view of the application here. So let me get rid of this default HTML in it. Now there is nothing to show inside the app here. Now let's start with creating signals. Before that I want to switch into the dark mode so that we can avoid the eye strains caused by the uh, white screen here. So here is the Chrome extension dark reader and I will just enable the dark mode on this website like this. Perfect. Now back to our default component, app component. Now let's get rid of this default component variable. Now I'm going to create a signal called counter. To create a signal, you can make use of this method signal from Angular core. See, here we have imported signal from Angular core and this is the method that we use for creating signals. Now the default value of this signal counter can be passed as a first argument to this method here. So this is how we create signals. Now let's check how to display the value inside the signal inside this component HTML here. So then here we have an H1 element. Inside that will show the value of this signal counter. So we have to wrap the code within double curly brace like this. So here we go counter which is the name of the signal. But in order to retrieve the value stored inside this signal we have to use the syntax like we invoke a method. A pair of parentheses should be appended at the end like we are calling a method or a function. So here we are showing the value inside the signal 0. Now inside this demonstration app I just want to send everything inside the HTML body. So I will have these style rules inside this default global style sheet styles.css. So that's it. Now let's check how to modify the value of a signal. For that, I'm going to add a button just below this H1 element. So we need a line break and we'll add this button. And this button is just to increment the value of the counter or the signal here. Now to do so, let's wire up a method for the click event like this. So here's the click event handler method increment counter. Now let's define this method inside the component like this. Now inside this method, we just need to increment the value of the counter here. For that, you can make use of the signal method update. So here we go, counter dot update method can be called. Inside that, we'll pass a callback function like this with a single parameter. So this parameter contains the current value of the signal counter. Now we just need to increment that by one and we have to return that like this. Now inside this arrow function, we only have one return statement. We can even reduce this like this. So we'll be using this update method whenever we want to update value of a signal based on the already existing value like this. Now let's check whether it works or not. Now if you click on this button, this uh, counter must be incremented but it's not working. I think I have made a mistake inside this on click event. Sorry, we forgot to call the method here. See each time we press the button, 
the counter get incremented like this. So whenever we want to update value of a signal based on the already existing value, we'll make use of this as signal method update. Now there is another method called set to update value of a signal. I will tell you the difference between these methods as set and update in a bit. For that, I will add one more button here called reset. And the corresponding button click event will be handled inside this method reset counter. So here is the method. Here also we want to update the counter. But when we use this method set, we are directly setting the value of the signal to a new value where we don't have to access the value of the current value like this update method. So that's the difference. We are directly setting the value to zero inside this reset method. So that's the difference between these methods set and update. Inside this update method, we have the access to the current uh, value of the signal, which is not available inside this uh, set method, okay? Let's try whether it works or not. Let's reset the value, boom. Now apart from these two methods, set and update, there is one more method called mutate, which also modify an existing signal. Now to discuss that, we need one more signal called numbers. So here we are calling the method signal. Don't get confused with the single from RxJS. We have to call this method signal, and inside that we are passing an array of numbers. So inside a signal, we could store simple primitive values like this, and also complex objects like object literals, arrays, arrays of objects, etc. Now let's show these array of elements inside this HTML. So first of all, just to separate from the existing counter example, I will have this horizontal line, and here we have the unordered list, and here we have the li element. We just need to iterate through the array numbers. So here we go. Here we have the ng directory of ng4 let number of number signal will be iterated here. So this is the name of the signal. In order to retrieve the value inside it, we have to use this function invocation syntax. Just append a pair of parentheses like this. So here we are trying to show each of the element or number inside the array in each of the li element like this. So here we go. Number. See? Now just beneath that, I'm going to add a button to modify the array. So here we go, button, and I will name the R button as modify the array. Now let's add a click event to this button. Inside that, we will do various operations on the signal numbers. So here we have the method modify the array. Now let's define the method here. Now suppose inside this method, we want to change the first element of this array. We can do that with this update method that we already know. So it would be like this number dot update method can be called. And here we have the callback method. So we'll be updating the first element inside the array like this. Let it be 10. Now we have to return the whole array like this. Let's try whether it works or not. See? It's worked perfectly fine, but we can do the same with less effort if we were using the method mutate. So here we go, numbers dot mutate method can be called. You could already see the description of this method. This method update the current value by mutating it in place. So let's check what does it mean. Here also we need a callback like this. This also corresponds to the current value of the signal. In order to modify the first element, we could do this. That's it. This will just modify the first element inside the uh, signal. We don't have to return the entire array like we have done with the update method. That's why we are calling it as mutate. It will modify the exact place where we want to modify. Here we are making a modification and we are returning the uh, updated copy back. If you are not returning the updated value, you could see the error, meaning it is expecting an array of numbers, but that's not the case with this mutate method. So this method mutate will keep the original object as it is and it will make the modification wherever needed directly inside the original object. And thereby the syntax of this callback within it can be much simpler. Since we have a single statement inside this arrow method, we can even uh, reduce it like this. So hope you understood how this mutate works. Let's get rid of this update method here. Back to the app. Now let's try to update the first element to 10 using mutate method. Boom, that's it. 
Now let's try to add a new element to this array. Now if we were doing that with this uh, update method, we have to do this. Current dot push method can be called and we'll be adding a 10 at the end and we have to return the new array like this. Let's check whether it works or not. That's it. Now let's try the same with this mutate method. Here we just need to call this push method like this. See? In case of the update method, we always have to return the new array back. So that's the benefit with using this method uh, mutate when you are working with a signal containing objects. So here we have created signals using this method signal. Now there is another way of creating signals which is by using the method computer. And such type of signals are defined with already existing signals like these are counters and numbers created using this signal method. Let me explain. Suppose we want to store some of numbers from this array. So in order to store such dependent values, we can create signals using the method computer. So here we go, sum of numbers and we can create this signal using the method computer. If it is not listed inside the auto suggestion, you have to separately import it like this, computed. Now let's calculate the sum from this already existing signal numbers array. So here we go. We can easily calculate sum of array of numbers using the array method reduce. I have already discussed how you can make use of the method array method reduce in gate depth. I have given the link in video description. Please go through it. So here we go. Numbers dot and we can retrieve the value like this. On this return array, we can call this method reduce. Inside that, we just need to pass an arrow function like this just to explain what operation is to be done on these numbers here. So first of all, we have this sum, then each of the element inside the array can be represented with this uh, parameter and we just need to add them like this. So this will always return the sum of the numbers from this array. Now suppose if you are not familiar with the array method reduce, you can do the uh, sum using the for loop over this numbers array. So don't worry. Now let's show the value of this computer signal just beneath this button. So that here we have a span. So here we are going to show sum of numbers from the array. Sum of numbers. So here we are showing the value of the computed signal sum of numbers. So here we have a typo. See, currently it is 13. Now within this method we are adding 10 at the end. See, so let me change the button text to push 10. Now if I click on this button, it should add a 10 to this existing signal numbers. The value of this computer signal uh, sum of numbers must be updated because it is depending on the array numbers here. Let's check that. See? So that's how computed signal works. Now there is one thing you should know. The signals that we create with the signal method will be of the type writable signals, meaning we can modify the values inside it with this method set, update, and mutate. But the signal created using this computed method is of the type signal, which means we can't modify the value in it with these signal methods. It's entirely dependent upon the computation that we have defined in it. So don't be confused with this method signal with the type signal here, which is not writable signal. So this is a type of signal and this is a method signal to create a signal. Okay. Now finally, we have to familiar with this method effect. Actually, this method is not going to create a new signal like these methods signal and computer. This method effect is useful to notify interested consumers when they change. An effect is an operation that runs whenever one or more signal values change. The action that we have defined within this effect method will be executed when the depending signals of this method changes. So it will be really helpful uh, to uh, subscribe or get notified when some actions occurs. Suppose inside this array example, as we push 10 to this existing array, the uh, sum of the elements get incremented like this. Okay, so whenever it reaches above 40, we have to show a notification. So here we are trying to do some operation based on a signal value. 
So it is similar to this computer method here which is also depending upon a different signal but but in case of this effect method we are not creating a signal we have to do some operation based on a value of a signal. In order to define an effect we have to have an injection context. So that will be a constructor of this component here. Now we could do this effect there is no auto suggestion so I will just import it manually effect will have this callback if sum of numbers greater than 40 we will just show this alert saying that exceeded 40 okay let's try that boom that's it so that's how effect works so this is how we can create and work with angular signals now let's check the formal definition of angular signal a signal is a wrapper around a value that can notify interested consumers when that value changes. Signals can contain any value from simple primitives to complex data structures. So that's what we have done inside our example. First of all, we have the primitive value number, which is counter, and then we had an array of numbers. So both primitive and complex data structures can be saved inside the signal. That's all you need to know to work with angular signals. If you want to know the benefits of angular signals over normal component variables, you could check out the articles and videos given in description. So that's it guys. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel Code of Friction if you haven't yet. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also benefit from this. Have a nice day. Bye.